I'm Dr. Les Lynette, and I hope to help you understand psychiatric problems. The case of Richard Gardner, MD. Dr. Gardner was an American psychiatrist best known for his proposing in 1985 the name Parental Alienation Syndrome. Gardner's ideas and writings about parental alienation syndrome have been denounced as junk science. While the name parental alienation is not mentioned in the DSM, the more accurate statement is that parental alienation has not yet been included. Other conditions have taken years before being included in the DSM. Gilles de la Tourette first described his syndrome, Tourette syndrome, in 1885. It was not until 1980, 95 years later, that Tourette syndrome entered the DSM. Asperger first described his syndrome in 1957. It was not until 1984, 37 years later, that it was accepted in DSM-4. Richard Gardner, ironically, was not the first to describe it. It was Wilhelm Reich, MD, who first discussed one parent alienating the child against the other parent in his book, Character Analysis. He spoke of divorced parents who defend themselves against narcissistic injury by fighting for custody of their child and defaming their former spouse, and that these parents seek, quote, revenge on the partner through robbing him or her of the pleasure of the child in order to alienate the child from the partner. Reich also questioned the alienating parent's love of the child. Quote, the child's love for the other partner is not taken into account. The first formal studies on what would later be called parental alienation syndrome were published by Judith Wallerstein and Joan Kelly in their 1976 paper, The Effects of Parental Divorce, published in the American Journal of Orthopsychiatry. In 1980, Wallerstein and Kelly described children who were, quote, particularly vulnerable to being swept up into the anger of one parent against the other. They were faithful and valuable battle allies in efforts to hurt the other parent. Not infrequently, they turned on the parent they had loved and been very close to. It was Gardner's detailed account of the strategies and manifestations of the phenomenon, along with his guidelines for intervention by courts and therapists, that captured the attention of those who argue that Parental alienation syndrome is junk science and that it is a clever strategy that endangers children. Ironically, Gardner has himself been denigrated and vilified for his contributions to understanding the unjustified denigration and vilification of targeted mothers and fathers. The website Cincinnati PAS Dot com makes an ad hominem attack on Richard Gardner. An ad hominem attack personally attacks the individual, casting doubt on his or her character or personal attributes as a way to discredit the individual's argument. Ad hominem attacks are considered logical fallacies that attempt to undermine someone's case without actually having to engage it. The CincinnatiPAS.com website shows a hand holding a knife and states correctly that Gardner committed suicide. However, the website does not indicate that Dr. Gardner's son, Andrew, reported that his father had been suffering from type 1 complex regional pain syndrome. On the website, we see a picture of a devil with a quote from Richard Gardner that pedophilia is a widespread and accepted practice among billions of people. This is followed by a headline, quote, has psychiatry gone psycho, unquote. 
The CincinnatiPAS.com website is taking Gardner's quote out of context. The quote comes from an earlier paper on a topic different from parental alienation syndrome. Gardner wrote the paper, a theory about the variety of human sexual behavior, long before he coined the term parental alienation syndrome in 1985. Gardner never condoned pedophilia. In Misinformation versus Facts about Richard Gardner, M.D., Dr. Gardner himself wrote, and I quote, This is my position on pedophilia. I consider pedophilia to be a form of psychiatric disturbance. Furthermore, I consider those who perpetuate such acts to be exploiting innocent victims with little, if any, sensitivity to the potential effects of their behavior on their child victims. I do believe, however, that pedophilia, Dr. Gardner writes, like all other forms of atypical sexuality, is part of the human repertoire of atypical sexuality. My acknowledgement that a form of behavior is part of the human potential is not an endorsement of that behavior. Rape, murder, sexual sadism, and sexual harassment are all part of the human potential. This does not mean I sanction these abominations. Cincinnati PAS website next goes on to state that if a child demonstrates negative feelings toward the father, Gardner blames the mother and suggests as a remedy increasing the child's time with the father. Such criticism in this website shows an ignorance of how Gardner and others actually define parental alienation syndrome. According to Gardner's formulation, if a parent's behavior does warrant the children's alienation, this is not a case of parental alienation syndrome. Some critics of parental alienation syndrome mistakenly equate parental alienation syndrome with only the child rejecting the parent. The Cincinnati PAS website thus creates a straw man by stating only the premise of a child demonstrating negative feelings towards the father. The Cincinnati PAS website goes on to call parental alienation syndrome junk science. By what authority is the allegation of junk science made? An ever-growing number of legal and mental health professionals are writing articles on parental alienation syndrome and citing it in courts of law. Neither the American Psychological Association nor the American Psychiatric Association has taken the position that parental alienation syndrome is junk science or that it does not exist. Nevertheless, the failure to include parental alienation as a diagnosis in the DSM-5 Diagnostic Manual, the most recent one published in 2013, is used as an argument that parental alienation syndrome is not accepted. However, the proposal that parental alienation be included as a formal diagnosis was made to the DSM-5 Task Force and published in the peer-reviewed American Journal of Family Therapy. The authors developed a bibliography of around 900 references of 36 countries on six continents. The DSM-5 Task Force, however, chose not to include the actual words parental alienation, stating that a similar diagnosis did exist in the DSM-5. That is, parent-child relational problem whose description includes negative attributes to the other's intentions, hostility toward or scapegoating of the other, and unwarranted feelings of estrangement. Is that not a description of parental alienation syndrome? Another diagnosis in the DSM-5 is child psychological abuse, which is non-accidental verbal or symbolic acts by a child's parent or caregiver that result or have reasonable potential to result in significant psychological harm to the child. Additional DSM-5 diagnoses may also be applicable in some cases of parental alienation syndrome. 
child affected by parental relationship distress. Thus, the DSM-5 now provides several official diagnoses which may be considered in cases of parental alienation syndrome in contrast to the, to the DSM-4 the concept of parental alienation syndrome is clearly included in the DSM-5, but not by name. Concerned about such misuse of his own ideas, Gardner published several books and articles on how to distinguish a child suffering from abuse from one suffering from parental alienation syndrome. In a 2002 article in the American Journal of Family Therapy, Gardner criticized the misuse of parental alienation syndrome. Attorneys, quote, frequently select out-of-context material in order to enhance their positions in courts of law, close quote, by Dr. Gardner. In Misinformation versus Facts about Richard A. Gardner, M.D., Dr. Gardner himself wrote, quote, the implication of this criticism, however, is that I somehow am responsible for such misrepresentation. Chapter 9, in the second edition of my book, Dr. Gardner writes, The Parental Alienation Syndrome, published in 1998, provides evaluators with detailed criteria for differentiating between true abusers and parental alienation syndrome indoctrinators. Criticism has been directed at me, Dr. Gardner writes, because some mental health professionals and courts of law are misusing PAS and exonerating bona fide abusers and claiming that the children's animosity towards them is the result of PAS by the other parent. Again, I am somehow being blamed for this, close quote, Dr. Gardner. The claim that he testified almost exclusively for fathers cannot be substantiated by anything Gardner has written, lectured on, or testified in court. In Misperceptions versus Facts about Richard A. Gardner, M.D., Dr. Gardner himself wrote that he testified on behalf of both women and men who had been victimized by PAS-inducing ex-spouses. In fact, in later years, Dr. Gardner writes, the number of PAS-inducing men against whom he testified had increased to a ratio of about 50-50, close quote. The Cincinnati PAS website states that Gardner is broadly but mistakenly believed to be a full professor at a prestigious university. The fact is that Dr. Gardner was promoted to the rank of full professor at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons in 1983. Parental alienation syndrome was characterized by the character assassination of the targeted parent. Ironically, Richard Gardner met similar attacks against his character, which did not address the case he made for one parent turning a child against the other parent. He was not the first to describe this phenomenon, but did coin the term parental alienation syndrome. He was its most visible spokesman. It remains a curious fact that so many women are victimized by ex-husband alienators, and so many women believe in the validity of parental alienation syndrome. Yet a great deal of mythology persists that parental alienation syndrome is not real. There have to be reasons for the aggressive opposition to parental alienation syndrome. Do you have any ideas why? Now don't go away. You can see a preview of my entire playlist. So go ahead and click the YouTube logo. You will be taken to my channel where you may subscribe and select the playlist either for this channel or for any of my other psychiatric playlists of possible interest to you. I hope to see you on YouTube. Bye.